If you're an average tabletop role-playing gamer today, there's a pretty good chance you saw one, if not several, online actual play games and their guides. There's actually a pretty good chance that if you did, it was Chris Perkins, Jeremy Crawford, B. Dave Walters, or, much more likely, Matthew Mercer. You might have seen these guys and thought to yourself that this is exactly how a role-playing game is supposed to work. You have detailed miniatures, three-dimensional maps, world-class performers, background music, mood lighting, and a cheering crowd of thousands. When, in reality, this is very, very rarely the case. And you probably won't know it until you play a game yourself. Or, preferably, play several games with several different guides. To shorten the lesson plan a little bit, though I do recommend you actually do it, every guide is different, every player is different, every game is different, and if you change one variable in that formula, the result can be a wildly different experience. For example, I could take my regular group of friends and play just D&D, but I could just come to one session wanting to play slowly and dramatically, to another wanting to just bash monsters and get loot, and in a third to go deep lore diving, and each game would be completely different. Now imagine that every player is doing that, and the guide brings a new story every time. You can even see this with Critical Role, as their game has changed and quite more evolved from one campaign to the next and over several small mini-arcs. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take anything from what you see other guides do. No writer writes without reading, and no filmmaker produces without watching others' work. But the biggest problems I've heard from guides who had bad players, and from guides who tried and didn't like it, is because they expected every game to be a AAA production, or tried to make it so, and realized that they aren't a voice actor or a world-class maker. What you can do, however, is pick, and choose, and steal. I don't mean go to your favorite guy's house and taking their miniatures. Don't do that. Don't do anything in the same zip code as that. What you should do is look at all your favorite guides, analyze their style and what makes them different from each other. Pick apart their common actions at the table, what their plans respond to the best, and find which of those you actually like and think will improve your performance, and of course, you think you are capable of doing. Do you like Critical Role's various voices and accents? It takes practice to get there. Do you appreciate it when Brennan Lee Mulligan praises and amplifies his players? You can start doing that right now. You can take P. Dave Walters' explosive energy, but be careful not to wear yourself out. Also, take house rules, for example, a very prevalent topic in the TTRPG space. Every game has them, even if you don't really think about it. In every hole where the rules of the game leave a little bit to interpretation, people have to fill it in at the table. And every table does it differently. I know I interpret the same rule or situation differently in different games I guide. Establishing your own house rules also does a lot for creating the ambience of your game. Start with how much of a rules lawyer you are. Are you a stickler or a rule of cool kind of person? Do you stand firm on rules decisions or allow your players to argue their points? Usually these things build up over play, so don't think you have to have a list before going in. But I will give a couple of examples of house rules with a variety of interpretations you can use to start establishing your tone. Think about rolling dice, the essence of most current and past role-playing games. Do you prefer to roll everything hidden and declare results, or everything in the open and show the rolls, the bonuses, and the target numbers? There's a spectrum there. When you want players to make a check but not know how well they did, do you roll for them, just use passive, or have them roll into a hidden location? Do you trust your players to ignore all the meta information you share about their challenges, or do you prefer to hide whatever you can so you can surprise them? And if you're into D&D, look at Counterspell. Sounds simple, right? You see a spell in range, you have a reaction available, and the counterspell prepared, you counter the spell. That's it. Well, not quite. Does hearing count as well? Do you have to see the whole person? Also, it's a split-second decision. Do you get to know which spell it is? Do you roll to know? Does knowing cost you something, like your precious reaction? Then, do you know the exact spell cast? The school? The level? Does it require proficiency in arcana, making only wizard folk actually good at counterspelling? There's a lot to unpack there, and it's all for you to do to define your own game. Your game is what you make it, and not what you see online. So make it a good one, and don't stress too much about it. It's just for you and your friends. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, press the thumbs up button. Please tell me what you think. Was this helpful? Would you show this to a friend who's a new guide or considering it? Subscription to the channel also helps a lot. Hit the notification bell if you want to know about livestream. That's it until next time. Stay good. Have fun.